Over time, I've come across many difficult integrals, and this is one of those integrals that I found to be particularly difficult. So go ahead and try it for yourself first, and then obviously, if you manage to solve it, well done. And otherwise, stick around to watch me go through the solution. So let's go through the solution. So first step is to take what's inside the square root and to complete the square. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take out negative 4 as a common factor. So we have x squared plus x minus 3 over 4. Okay, so that now, completing the square, we're going to have to have an x with a constant squared minus 3 over 4 with another constant, and then all of that is negative 4 times by negative 4. So this constant that we're looking for is the coefficient of x divided by 2. So that's 1 divided by 2, so plus 1 over 2, but we had to square it for it to go in here. So then we added it when it was squared, so now we have to subtract it out here to keep the whole value the same, also when it's squared. So now we're subtracting 1 over 2 squared, which is the same as subtracting 1 over 4. And minus 3 over 4 minus 1 over 4 is minus 4 over 4, which is just minus 1. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do to make this easier is to take is to distribute this negative back in. So now we have 4 into 1, because this 1, negative 1 times by negative, is going to be positive 1, minus x plus 1 over 2, all squared. And now we can put this completed square form of what's inside the root back into the integral to make it easier. So let's go ahead and do that. So of course, let's demarcate this as just working. And our integral is equal to x over all of this, which is square rooted. So it's 4 into 1 minus x plus 1 over 2 squared, and then dx. But this 4 is also the same as 2 to the power of 2. And so the square root of 4 is just 2. So we can take that 4 out as a 2. And then because it's a constant, we can take out the integral as 1 over 2. Okay, so the next step is to make a substitution. So we're going to make x plus 1 over 2 equal to u. So we have x plus 1 over 2 equals u. All right, so then the derivative of u in terms of x is just going to be 1. So du equals dx. So now, noticing that when we substitute these back into this integral, we're going to make this substitution to be u. We're going to make this substitution to be du. But then we have this x here, and we don't really know what to substitute. So we simply re-manipulate this. And now we have x is equal to u minus 1 over 2. All right. So we'll go ahead and rewrite this integral in terms of u. So we have u minus 1 over 2 in the numerator all over the square root of 1 minus u squared du. And now this integral has a fraction within it that can be split into 2. So we can split the integral into 2. So we have 1 over 2 into the integral of u over 1 minus u squared in the square root du minus 1 over 2 into the integral of 1 over 2 over the square root of 1 minus u squared du. So now we can take this 1 over 2 out. It's a constant. So 1 over 2 times 1 over 2 is 1 over 4. And there we have 1 over 4. Now this integral is easy to solve. We notice that it's the derivative. What's inside it is the derivative of arc sine of x. So if we're integrating a derivative, what we're getting is essentially what we're first deriving. So because integration and differentiation are the reverses of each other. So we have this becomes minus 1 over 4 arc sine of u. And then when we're doing integration, we have the constant plus c. And now for this integral, we're going to make a substitution. So we're going to let, and then let's just do a side note here. We're going to let 1 minus u squared equal to s. And this will be a good substitution because we'll be left with u to the first degree after differentiating this. And we have a u to the first degree to the first degree inside our integral. So it'll make sense. So now we do the derivative of s in terms of u, and we get negative 2 du. Okay, but now, sorry, that's negative 2u du. Okay, but now we have u du. We don't have this negative 2. So that's easy enough. We just take it to the other side. So we have minus 1 over 2 ds is equal to u du. All right, so let's make that substitution. And we have 1 over 2 into the integral of... So for u du, we substitute in this. So we have for ds minus 1 over 2. And then inside the square root, we're substituting an s. 
Okay, and now this negative 1 over 2 can come out because it's a constant. And so we have minus 1 over 4, and then we can get rid of that. And then the square root of s is the same as saying s to the power of 1 over 2. And s to the power of 1 over 2 in the denominator is the same as s to the negative 1 over 2 in the numerator. And then still, we bring this down. Minus 1 over 4, arcsine of u plus c. Okay, so now let's do this integral. We have minus 1 over 4, and then what we do is we take s to the power of 1 over 2, because we added 1 to the exponent, and then we divide now by the exponent. So negative 1 over 4 divided by 1 over 2 is just going to be minus 1 over 2, and then this is minus 1 over 4 arc sine of u plus c. All right, now we make a substitute in, we make the substitutions back so that we can eventually express this in terms of s, I mean in terms of x. So first we have this s here that we need to express in terms of u before we can express it in terms of x. So s is equal to 1 minus u squared. So we have minus 1 over 2, and then the square root of 1 minus u squared, then minus 1 over 4, arc sine of u, plus c. Now our whole integral is expressed in terms of u, but we want to have it expressed in terms of x. So you'll see here that we initially made u equal to x plus 1 over 2. So every time we see a u now, we're going to substitute back our x plus 1 over 2. So we have minus 1 over 2 into the square root of 1 minus x plus 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 4 times by arc sine of x plus 1 over 2 plus c. Okay, so now this I noticed was very similar to when we completed the square. It's the same form. And so this is essentially how you could express your integral and you could leave the solution as so. But I really want to simplify it more for you so that you see what these certain parts of our solution, where they came from. So when we completed the square, we had this here. So I'm going to copy it. And that, as you'll notice, was equal to this, which is what was initially in the square root. So now we have to relate these two. So what we need is a 4 in there to relate this here to what's inside the square root. So we have minus 1 over 2 times by 2 over 2 into the square root. Okay, but we needed the 4. So 2 to the power of 2 square rooted. And we take that now because all these square roots can be under the same roof. So that can go out there as a 1 over 2. And we can put in the 2 squared in here. And 2 squared we know to be 4. So now we've related this and what's inside the square root. So we can get rid of this now. And this here becomes minus 1 over 4. And now we keep this minus 1 over 4 arc sine of x plus 1 over 2 plus c. All right. But this here was equal to what we initially had inside the square root, which was this the 3 minus 4x minus 4x to the power of 2. So we can get rid of all of this and just write that, 3 minus 4x minus 4x squared. So there you go, there's the final solution. And I really wanted to do this reverse process over here to show you that this was actually the denominator. And it wasn't really necessary because at this point here we had solved the integral in terms of x, but I just wanted to show you it in the form where we expressed it in terms of our initial integral. So I hope you did enjoy the solution. If you managed to do it yourself, once again, well done. And thank you for sticking around this long if you did. And if you found this video helpful and useful, please don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the Countdown series. Thank you.